Good morning. It is Wednesday, February 3rd, and I'm en route to Maryland right now. Um, heading down there to meet up with Tim Hubler and a couple of his friends. Uh, we're going to be doing some pushes in Maryland with our flintlock muzzle loaders today. Today is one of three days you can use traditional equipment in Maryland to hunt deer. That would include anything like a long bow or a recurve bow or traditional muzzle litter. We're going to try to get on some deer uh, with flintlocks. The season's very appealing to me. I'm really into history. Well, you'll see when I even get my gun out. The gun I'm using, the muzzle litter I'm using, it was made by a good friend of mine. His name is John Grube. He's actually the guy that did podcasts regarding the long range shooting. John Grube is a very, very talented gun maker and he knew I was into history and uh, we worked together and he, he made me a Lancaster County, Pennsylvania style uh, muzzle loader. And I designed a few things to add to the gun to kind of individualize it. So I'm pretty excited to use that to uh, try to get a deer today. If I do, it'll be my first deer with that gun. Also, I grew up in a small town, Washington Borough. And that area was inhabited by the Susquehannock Indians uh, from the late 1500s up through the mid 1700s. And it really was inhabited by native people in that area for up to almost 20,000 years. Um, but growing up as a kid, I would walk the farmer's fields after they got plowed and it was a good rain. And I'd find artifacts, arrowheads, spear points, glass beads, um, pottery. And I always was amazed finding those artifacts to just to think about what the world was like for the people that made those artifacts or used those those tools. Over the years, I've collected, you know, I've collected several beads and several arrowheads. Um, the beads I'd often string together uh, for display purposes. Uh, but what I decided to do today for this traditional season was I actually decided to um, wear um, some of the beads that I'd found. These are glass trade beads. They've, they come from Europe. They were traded to the native people in the um, early 1600s. The site that I found them on was um, occupied right around 1600 to 1625 or so. So these beads have not been hunting for over 400 years, probably closer to 425 years. So today, using a flintlock muzzleloader in the traditional season, we're going to uh, take these beads on their first hunt in 425 years. I just think it's gonna be pretty cool. We have this, this uh, 14 inches of snow here in this area. We have our, our traditional equipment and we have some history going with us and um, hopefully it all equates to a, a fun, uh, memorable hunt with our friend, with my friends and um, maybe some filled tags. Washington Borough in size pot. And it's supposed to be the Susquehanna River and the River Hills. And my cheek piece. I mean, that's the effigy turtle I found. Patch box. We got to reposition or set up a different section of this uh, kind of this uh, wood line of these fence rows. It's windy, it's chilly, but pretty good advantage when right here. I can see right here behind me. This open area here, through here, and then this power line here. I can see through there really good. through here we shall see all right guys we're getting ready to do drive number two of the day um, I just got in position uh, my buddy Tim and Jason are getting in position now and we're getting ready to drive this out so here we are in Maryland we're going to do a push a little push is a nice little finger that goes up kind of wise a few different ways but the deer like the bed is real thick season here in Maryland so we're in, allowed to use our flint locks. I'm here with my buddy Bryce and got the camera all set up here. We're hoping that they come down through here and uh, he has a box. 
dog tag, so hopefully we can get that filled here today. If not, um, we're going to try to put it down on the ground, so stay tuned. Well guys, we were sitting here waiting and um, seen about six doe come in down the bottom and then they started to turn and kind of come up in front of me and then next thing you know all heck broke loose and there was probably about 20 deer that started coming through here. And um, I noticed at least one buck in the group. And um, I had doe come running past me and I couldn't get one to stop at all. And then next thing you know, a big one came running back. So they all kind of just stopped and scattered. And during all the freaking action, I'm trying to figure out. Here come more deer right now. Looks like they're heading down to Jason. Jason's down there in that creek bottom. He might get a shot here soon. Meh, meh, meh. Go off. I cleaned my uh, frizz in a little bit flake or two off the flint and shot and it uh, went right off so <laughs> into the ground I was you know I was testing it didn't work when the deer were in front of me uh, part of the fun of I guess using a flintlock right <laughs>
anyway, go see what uh, the other guys did. He got some shots. <laughs> yeah, you come up. Uh, there was a bunch of deer. They scattered everywhere, and then I noticed him in the bottom, and I I thought he was going down to Tim. So. Uh, yeah, well, I put it on his chest and I flinched. And I think that's what caused me to shoot upward or whatever like that. So, so you were one of the first shots then? Uh, I shot after Tim. Oh, there you go, guys. First buck ever, first deer ever with the flintlock. What was that, 15 yards right there by that wood pile? Probably not even. I think I flinched a little bit. That's why I hit him high in the neck. So, batteries out, guys. He was on his chest. There was like freaking... Um, <laughs> there was like 20 of them. Well, he that cut, is awesome. There was four of them that came in, and then no four oh. doe. And then I'm watching him, and you saw how they stopped up here. Yeah. So I'm watching him. Next thing you know, I noticed like three or four more drop in. That's when I saw horns. That's 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 when I thought he was going to shoot at because he. Well, yeah, he never come up to the top. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, I see 20 doe. I told him like big freaking doe. Yeah. Started going, and I guess because they saw a the field, they were like screw that, and they yeah. came back. Well, they scattered everywhere and I'm just trying to find which one to shoot yeah. and all of a sudden I look in front of me and he just he he don't even hear the flintlock go off because he's just watching other deer freaking dropped them that's I flinched awesome. a little bit I'm like <laughs> <laughs> that's why I dad flinched yeah, man. Congratulations. thank you Good job. he came in and uh he stopped like 15 yards in front of me he had he had no idea the shot even like the thing was sizzling uh -huh. he's like looking around <laughs> boom dropped him his track like I flinched that's why I hit him high in the neck kind of but All right, well, I'm back in my truck, uh, hydrating, and uh, looking forward to getting a little food, getting a little food in my system. But um, we got six pushes in today. I just killed that good buck, uh, his first flintlock kill, which is awesome. Um, I had opportunities, uh, gun didn't go off, but that's part of using a flintlock. So um, all in all, it was a good day. I think everybody, yeah, everybody shot their guns um, at deer, um, or at least tried to, and. Um, we saw probably maybe 20, 30 doe and a handful of buck. So that's it for our deer season. It's kind of a wrap. All in all, it was a really, really eventful season. We had some really good hunts and uh, just had a lot of good times with our family and friends and just being outside. So, um, you know, rolling into the spring, we're going to be doing, uh, you know, some fishing and turkey hunting, uh, of course, scouting and like prepping for next archery season. So be sure to kind of check us out, keep tabs on our uh, channel, and, you know, if you have any suggestions, comment for sure, and we'll see what we can do. Looking forward to the, what lies ahead and uh, just being outside and sharing the outdoors with all of you. So see you out there.